know this is a short session, um, so we're going to try to have to start early. 8.30 means 8.30, so like, if you've got plans uh, coming in late, you know, let me know so that we can uh, plan accordingly. Um, you know, the, the, the dockets could be really tight uh, moving forward. Uh, the subcommittees have a lot of work before them. Uh, some, some housekeeping measures before I go into the introductions of uh, the members. Um, a couple things. Uh, if you have a substitute or amendment, on your bill and tell your colleagues this, please uh, let the staff know um, and let them look at it before uh, you submit it. You know, a lot of times you don't want to create and uh, redraft in the subcommittee. Uh, it's, it's good preparation to have that ahead of time. So that's, that's good. We did that last year and it worked more smoothly. Um, if you ask for a bill to go by for today, and we'll, we'll, we'll let all the other colleagues know about this is, um, as you know, again, it's a short session. Uh, if you go by for the day on your bill, there's no guarantee that it's going to be heard in a timely manner because we have a lot of bills, right? If you uh, have an audio visual, visual presentation or um, special request, please see, see the uh, staff and they'll accommodate you uh, accordingly. All right, without further ado, let's uh, recognize some of the members. Before we do that, let's, let's take attendance on these new uh, fantastic uh, voting machines. Okay, the vote's closed. We have a quorum present. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. My voting machine is not working. Could I be recording as present, please? You shall. The chairman says on. <laughs> Technology. I mean, that's coming. <laughs> Delegate Collins, please introduce yourself. Welcome to our committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a pleasure to be here. Chris Collins, 29th District, Winchester, Berkeley County, Warren County, and parts of Front Royal. Les Adams, representing the 16th House District, Pennsylvania, <coughs> Henry County. Todd Pilly, Fourth House District, parts of Washington, a little bit of Wise, all of Dickinson, and uh, almost all of Russell. Dave Warrock, 33rd House District, portions of Ottawa, Clark, and Frederick Counties. Delegate Terry Austin, 19th House District, Allegheny, City of Cousin, Bottom Clark, Bay. Jim Lamonian, 67th District which encompasses western Fairfax and eastern Loudoun counties and is adjacent to Interstate 66, the most congested highway and the most congested region in the United States of America. <laughs> Took me up there, I don't know. Uh, Mark Dudenever, I, uh, my district resides along the I-95 corridor of the Prince William and Stafford, and I certainly challenge uh, Delegate Lemonian's assessment of the most uh, congested area. I suggest every day you look at the uh, a, a map of the United States, and there's rarely a time where that stretch of I-95 is red. And I would say that uh, 66 doesn't quite live up to that. David Yancey, 94, City of Newport News. David Toscano, I uh, represent Charlotte Hill and Omaha County, 57th District, Thomas Jefferson's District. Thank you. Dolores McCoy, representing the 7th House District, East and North, and Michael County, North and Chesterfield, and then the City of Richmond. Betsy Carr, City of Richmond, and uh, Chesterfield. Killer Horn representing the 41st House District, all within Fairfax County, Springfield, Burke, Fairfax, and Fairfax Station. Mm -hmm. Ken Plum representing the 36th District, that's the very western area in Fairfax, 5th, 2nd, 
arm of VDOT is located on the grounds of EVA, and it's actually a joint organization between the university and the, the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, we work with them closely to, to, to bring innovation to how transportation services are delivered to, to the state. We also work closely with the federal government. Um, for example, the, the Saxton, I'm sorry, the uh, Turner Fairbank Highway Research Laboratory, which is in McLean, um, is the Federal Highway Administration's research laboratory, and we have a number of our students who are actually on site there working with their research staff to bring innovation <coughs> to the whole country. We also work with the private sector. For example, I've just chosen one company here, Lidos. We uh, work with them directly with our students and faculty working with them on projects on a day to day basis. And we also work with uh, the, the whole group of, of uh, transportation consulting firms, particularly through BTCA. Uh, to deliver training programs to, to keep them at their, uh, uh, their, their, their best. Um, with this, I want to now introduce you to uh, Dr. Lindsay Iberberg. She's going to talk to you about one of our major programs, the Mid-Atlantic Transportation Sustainability Center. So. Uh, again, my name is Lindsay Iberberg, um, and I'm I just wanted to point out a couple of things. I hope you did notice that, that our partners on MATS UTC include Virginia Tech and Old Dominion. Um, I, I realize there's plenty of rivalries between the universities and the Commonwealth and athletic events, but it's important that you know that we are working really hand in hand to address some of these really important transportation needs. So I think that's worth noting. Um, and also, this, this Beyond Traffic uh, designation is, is really a big deal. There are very few universities in the country who have this designation, and uh, it, it puts us in a position to, to really help to drive a lot of the, the um, initiatives <laughs> nationwide in terms of improving our, our transportation system. Um, now I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about our research programs, and, and as uh, Chairman Lillian just said, we had a chance when he was in Charlottesville uh, several months ago to show him our labs and, and some of our uh, projects. Um, I couldn't bring the labs here with me today, so I wanted to talk to you about them. Um, but again, what we're really focusing on is how do we take advantage of the advances in technology?
technology to make our transportation system safer, more efficient, and more predictable. Um, I heard a number of introductions of folks who, uh, who, who are uh, representing areas that have you know, significant challenges there, and it's very much our, our goal is to, to address those challenges. So I want to talk about three areas connecting autonomous vehicles. Uh, we'll talk about recurrent flooding in Hampton Roads and particularly how it relates to transportation. And then talk a bit about shared autonomous electric vehicles. So, the first area um, is, is look, we've heard so much about automated vehicles these days. Um, one of the things that, that we're focusing on in particular is not just automating vehicles, but connecting them, connecting them with wireless communications. So that, so that we can, so vehicles and all travelers can operate more collectively as opposed to individually to allow our system to be safer and more efficient. Um, so, and, and one thing we can be very proud of here in Virginia, Virginia is a, lead, a leader nationally in terms of states and vehicles. For example, there is a program called the Connected Vehicle Pool Fund Program, which incorporates half the states in the country, as well as uh, Canada and some uh, countries in Europe, looking at how the public sector, how infrastructure providers can use connected vehicles. Virginia is a lead for this program. Um, we're supporting uh, Virginia in this uh, through the University of Virginia. So how can this help us? Well, some of the projects we've been involved with, I can briefly describe uh, travel awareness and information. For example, one project we will work on is, is simply tying, uh, con connecting to the variable message signs you see on roadways to, uh, to wireless communications to basically allow vehicles to receive this information digitally so the messages can be read to the, to the driver or presented on a heads up in vehicle display as you see in this photograph here. So instead of trying to look over that tractor trailer and see a message as you drive 65 miles an hour, you actually have this message read to you, perhaps in a, in a language that, that better suits you, um, and, and make sure that you have more information, more awareness of your situation. Uh, this can go as far as to look at, you know, what is highway signing the future mean? Are we, are we always going to have metal signs stuck in the ground next to the roadway? Or is there a better way of providing information to travelers through databases, communications, things of that issue? So we're trying to do what we can to make sure that we're ready for that future um, in, in the state. You also can do much better, a much better job of monitoring infrastructure. You know, something is, is day to day that we worry about is potholes. Where are the potholes? How bad are they? How do we maintain our roadways? Well, every vehicle that rolls off the assembly line today has accelerometers, sensors to measure how much of the vehicle is bouncing up and down and going side to side. If you can grab that data, put it together, you can determine very quickly the roughness of roadways and determine, do I get paid? Do I, do I get away in here? What, what, what should I do to maintain my infrastructure? We've actually uh, <coughs> typed these systems on I-64 and found that these systems, which are essentially free, you're simply integrating to existing technology, uh, can do a very good job of monitoring the condition of pavements. And then finally, we look at areas such as tra transportation control and management, something that's <coughs> traffic signals. Can we support eco-drive, which I'll talk about next? Can we better alert you to red light violations, things of that nature? So we're looking at how we use this connectivity to make our, our system more, more safe and more efficient. Um, this, this next slide here is talking about the eco-driving aspect. And again, the idea here is, that, is to give vehicles information about traffic signal settings so that, so that you don't have the stop and go you often experience on, on, on uh, integrated corridors that results in much of the uh, emissions and fuel loss. Um, another important thing that we're doing at UVA is that all this technology sounds great, but we can't forget about the fact that there are really people who are, are, are operating vehicles and there are pedestrians and riding bicycles and things of that nature. How do they get appropriate with the system? We're working with a, a driving simulator at the university to prototype these systems for real life human beings to see how they react to these systems to make sure that the designs in the future best accommodate our needs and our desires as, as individuals. Uh, shifting gears a bit now, I, I want to talk about this work we're doing in the Hampton Roads area looking at um, flooding in the transportation system. Uh, this first slide you see here is, is using LIDAR data, which is a highly accurate elevation data set, to look at essentially the, the elevations of major roadways in the Hampton Roads area. They're color-coded, as, as you can see on the monitors. Um, we take that and link it to the level of, uh, of congestion or the, the volume of, of traffic on particular roadways and try to find most
most critical locations in terms of elevations, you know, for your most prone to flooding and traffic volume. You see those are identified here, and many of these are some pretty serious, significant areas in, in the Hampton Roads region. Now, one of the things that we're really focusing on is not just to say, okay, here's the problem, but rather what do we do about it? And, and so the next step we're looking at is how do you monitor rainfall constantly? How can you have a more active system to deal with flooding known areas of vulnerability? And, and this, this next slide here is showing you um, these locations in Virginia Beach along with the, um, the, the catchment areas and the, and, the, and the sensors. And so what we're looking at next is, and we have been working with Virginia Beach on this, is you know, what, what do we have to do in terms of, of enhancing the, the, the rainfall monitoring network so we, have, so we know where, rain, you know where the flooding potential is in real time so that we can do things about it. And, and, and so that's the, another example of trying to harness newer information technology to deal with a, an age old problem and, and a growing problem of, of, of flooding our transportation system. Finally, in terms of research, I wanted to, to uh, address autonomous vehicles, um, shared autonomous vehicles, and, and you know, some of you kind of think of this as, as the Ubers of the future, and they usually aren't the Ubers of the future. We, these are, you're seeing shared autonomous vehicles operating in Pittsburgh today. Um, the issue is, you know, what will these do to our transportation system? How can we take advantage of them? And are there issues that we need to be worried about from, from the public sector to, to take advantage of this and, and to design into the future? So again, the issue is with smartphones, autonomous vehicles, and the shared economy, you know, the, the Uber approach, um, what will this do? And one of our faculty members at UVA who couldn't be here today, uh, Don Chin, is doing quite a bit of the work on this in terms of, of how how this shared usage will impact our system. One of the things she's finding out is that, as you see here, that you know, a single shared vehicle can serve eight to 13 times the number of trips that our traditional cars share today. That's huge. If you look at our cities, we spend an enormous, we, we, much of this, the land use in cities is devoted to storing vehicles, right? Parking garages, surface parking lots. What if this becomes less important in the future, less necessary? What does that do to our, our, our cities? change our transportation system. So we're looking at that very carefully. Um, it also supports transit. And one of the big issues with transit is, is how do you get from the, the, the stop to the home? This could be a big part of that and, and making transit a much more viable option in, in the less dense areas that many, we have many of these types of areas in Virginia. And, and again, so that, that's uh, one slide ahead of my apologize if I was going to one. Okay. And I want to sum up our, our research work by talking about uh, a, a really exciting new initiative at the School of Engineering and Applied Science at UVA, and that's our <laughs> Link Lab. And the Link Lab focuses on cyber physical systems. Uh, a lot of us think of these, this is the Internet of Things you hear about today, the fact that you, know, you, you can have a, a receptacle on your wall that's connected to your Wi-Fi, you can turn lights on and off from wherever you are. That's, it, that's getting everywhere now. That, a lot of what I talk to you about today is really the application of this technology to the surface transportation system. So we, we are tying together all of the engineering disciplines to work on this problem and we've made a significant investment in this at UVA. Another big area of focus, and I think this is going to be a, a growing area of importance in transportation, that is cybersecurity. We hear about cybersecurity all the time. But you know, when we talk about these systems and vehicles, signal control, things of that nature, cybersecurity becomes very, very important. Um, the old approach to cybersecurity of building this big protective wall around your system sounds good, but now we have a system that includes everyone's vehicles, pedestrians, you can't build a wall big enough to keep everybody out. So how do you approach cybersecurity from a new, more, uh, more sustainable perspective? That's something we're really focusing on in UVA today as well. Um, so, with that, I, uh, that's, that's some of the talk about the technology and the research we're doing. Uh, one of the things that's becoming very clear to us and to industry is that the, how we prepare the transportation professional in the past will not be sufficient to make professionals uh, competitive and effective in the future. And we're putting a lot of effort into really revamping and improving how we train um, students at the university as well as practicing professionals uh, in the industry. I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. 
that code, they don't ask to talk to you about some of our work on the education side. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Thank you very much for uh, inviting us here, uh, Mr. Prime um, I um, was in front of this committee several times before, um, representing the BDOT's research division. Um, you can see a lot of familiar faces. Um, um, one of the goals that we really focused on at, at the Virginia Transportation Research Council was implementation of research. And, and from, the, from the perspective of, 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 of not from project to out into the field, my, um, um, my focus now has, is, is, is implementing for education uh, the other key component. Um, and we offer uh, uh, several, several different approaches the more traditional bachelor's degree um, that you see there, we have three tracks. Um, one, infrastructure systems. That includes uh, um, um, uh, transportation as well as, as um, some structural or materials applications. It's, it's a broad-based approach uh, 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 to civil engineering and, and what civil engineers do. Um, we, of course, have environmental and water resources. And then the third option for the undergraduate program is the Structural Mechanics and Materials Program. Um, uh, those are, are fairly traditional. Um, I would say that um, um, what, what I think is the strength of the, the university program is bringing in these technologies to the classroom. Um, our undergraduates get, get hands-on experiences. Um, they get uh, uh, opportunities to participate in these laboratories. That, that, that builds upon the implementation side of research. Um, from the undergraduate program, we have a, a graduate level program. Um, one of the uh, emphasis, the emphasis that I'm, I'm working on is the professional master's of engineering track. Um, that, that program is a non-research uh, master's degree. Um, the, the National Academy of Engineering, the American Society of Civil Engineers, American Society of Mechanical Engineers all are looking at the master's level degree as the professional degree. Um, and we are preparing uh, uh, for that uh, occurrence um, um, by providing a master's of engineering non-thesis, non-research degree. And again, um, its focus is, is training the, the engineer uh, of, of, of today with tomorrow's technologies, for example. We offer a course in transportation operations now and teach the same kinds of things that we were teaching 10 years ago with signal optimization, et cetera, when in fact we now have this connected community uh, with, with vehicles talking to one another, vehicles talking to infrastructure. Um, in the structures track, um, um, I, I did a lot of work in bridge, bridge design. Uh, um, how can connected vehicle help in that arena? Well, uh, Brian alluded to it. The, the, each vehicle now becomes a data acquisition system. Each vehicle has, has means to tell us what kind of ride quality we have. Those are kinds of things that, the information that engineers need. Um, but, but training a traditional engineer to design a bridge is, 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 is important, but training a, an engineer to understand and, and, and be able to make decisions on, uh, say, a, a network of bridges and, 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 and what to do, when to do it in terms of maintaining that system. So a large a big focus in the professional master's degree is really taking the research and, 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 and changing courses to meet the needs today, but as well as looking into the future. We also have the traditional two uh, research focus degrees, and those are, of course, the master's of science and doctor of philosophy that we, that we uh, traditionally have, 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 have uh, provided to the Commonwealth. The other side, is the Transportation Training Academy. Um, this is um, uh, for the working professional, um, especially for localities, um, for the cities, towns, getting technology into their hands and understanding how to apply it. And this, the mission, as you see there, is to provide training and technical assistance to primarily, primarily localities where resources are scarce. Uh, they don't have uh, a, a, a large staff, they may not have training opportunities. So this, the training academy provides these opportunities to train uh, transportation professionals. Um, we, we do that through uh, uh, various different training partnerships with, with state and local government. Uh, we get federal funding to do this. 
we do it through a host of, um, of webinars, to uh, uh, sem uh, da daily seminars, to um, outreach. Uh, we have a two-week transportation project management institute. That's uh, one of the probably the key uh, keynote uh, pro program um, that we provide um, in terms of uh, commitment for a full two-week uh, endeavor into this into project management. So we provide undergraduate, graduate, and uh, uh, training to the working professional as well. Um, we, uh, as you can see, a couple bullets I, I wanted to focus on. Um, the curricula is ever-changing. The technologies are ever-changing. Um, the University of Virginia has the uh, uh, Data Science Institute um, looking at large data and, and, and how to gather the data, gather key uh, information from these databases. And, 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 and public entities like VDOT have significantly large databases where uh, we, we are data rich and sometimes not necessarily able to get into that data. We spend a lot of money for getting the information and, and, and manipulating these databases. The Data Institute focuses on um, uh, data mining and telling the best story you can from that data. Take advantage of that, it offer up Courses that will provide uh, uh, traditional civil engineers with those with those tools that they will they will need in in, in, the, in the world of transportation and infrastructure management. Um, uh, and my last point is uh, the department is in the University of Virginia School of Engineering is dedicated to implementing new technologies and advances uh, um, and, and, and leading uh, the way in terms of from from research to hands on. certainly isn't in my area of expertise, but I would say that I think that you need to, I think in, in, the, in the case for Hampton Roads, you need to put every, any and all possible, possible solutions out there because building a way out of it is just, it's, it's, it, in, in, a, in a traditional construction uh, uh, manner, is, I don't think that's going to happen. So I, I, I would say absolutely worth investigating and then see. I just don't have the expertise to, to really say absolutely yes, but I would say right now, option keep every option available. Thank you, Chairman. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman? Delegate get to Scott. I don't know whether Dr. Smith wants to answer this, but it's a question about the recurring flooding in the uh, hyphen road. Sure. So, Dr. Smith, I'm really interested in how long had, had your sensors been implanted at various places in Hampton Roads to gather the data, and uh, at what point will you have enough sort of uh, time-related data to give us some indication of what's happening there? I mean, we have these 
theories about Norfolk sinking and sea level rise, but do you have any information? Will you know when you have enough data to make some judges about that? So uh, the sensors have been in place for, for several years now, and, and the, that, that network is growing. Um, I do have to say that the research that we're doing is not so much focused on, on what is happening perspective, but rather how do we address this in real time from a transportation system. I know there are other people who are studying the issue you're bringing up. That's not something that we're focusing on in our center. So I'm afraid I can't tell you more. <laughs> Any other questions? I see we uh, have a representative from VDOT here. Joanne, jo jo good morning. How's the man doing? Um, Joanne, are you implementing any of these um, things at uh, EVA and some of the other universities uh, in partnership with uh, some of your practices? Mr. Chair, as um, probably Mr. Gomez mentioned, we um, probably the, the tie that binds all of this together is our research council. And the research council is somewhat the, the link between research and implementation. And so the research council has been looking at some of these issues and, and to the extent I could, I could get someone over here who could, who could give you more detail, more information about the different things that we are trying to implement. But many of these things are still very much in the research phase. Um, but with regard to if you're, if you're talking specifically flooding or if you're talking the connected vehicle technologies and all of the various technologies associated with traffic management, et cetera, et cetera we certainly are implementing more and more every day with regard to traffic management. We are, we are looking heavily at the flooding issues, um, to what extent we've actually implemented measures that would address some of the flooding, that, that is a work in progress. Sure. <coughs> So um, 
just want to give you that example as, as a way, and, and also that data is also being used now by VDOT um, and other agencies to try to do a better job of planning their facilities, managing facilities. So this just gives you another example of how this work <coughs> can and is implemented um, to, to make, in many ways, things that we don't necessarily recognize on a daily basis. Thank you. Well, as you can see, um, any other questions? Mr. Chair? Delegate from Monday. I might have missed it, but is the, is the presentation you saw earlier online through some link or website? We, we will put it online. Yes, it is not currently, but I'm happy to put it online. Okay, I'd like to share it with a few people back on my district. I'd be happy to. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll do that and get you information. Thank you. Any other members from the committee have questions? Well, as you can see, they're a tremendous resource. Um, use them and utilize them in your, in your home districts. Um, you know, uh, encourage you know, young folks to get involved in the transportation industry. Uh, as you know, we're, this committee is a job creator committee, so uh, go forth and do good. Uh, having no other further business, we'll meet uh, 8.30 sharp Thursday to be on time. Uh, there's a lot of uh, bills that are going to be heard. Uh, there's a number of uh, bills and subcommittee that are of interest. Uh, we're going to have a great session. 